Welcome back to a Moment in History. I'm Seth Udinsky. Well, there are few mythical creatures in the pages of history quite so magnificent and terrifying as the dragon. Massive in size and strength, and according to the legends, often terribly vindictive, and possessing the ability to breathe fire while also a deep love of gold, dragons have captured the imaginations of storytellers while also striking fear into the hearts of many. The dragon has played an integral role in the story of many cultures, but particularly in Christendom and the Christian imagination, hitting fever pitch, I'd say, in the Middle Ages. Now, of course, this leads the historian to the obvious question. With so many legends across so many cultures and times, we have to ask, are dragons real? Well, before we answer that, let's explore the evidence based on historical legends. St. George and the Dragon, St. Julio and the Water Serpent from Italy, St. Jordi and the rescue of the Spanish princess from being devoured, the Black Dragons of the Baltic region, the legend of Merlin and the Battle of the Two Dragons from Wales, the Chinese legend of the Four Dragons, dragon myths from India and other places in the world, and let's not forget the biblical writings themselves on the draconic creature Leviathan, Dragons are everywhere in stories and show up virtually everywhere in the world. Now, in the Christian experience, many dragon myths come from the Middle Ages, as we said, or from the late Roman Empire. St. George, for example, who's the patron saint of England, was one example of a Christian Roman soldier from the third century AD who was martyred for his faith. Now, legend has it that he once slayed a dragon and rescued a local princess in the process. There are many similar stories like it in Christendom with dragons representing forces of evil and heroes coming to vanquish the dragon for good. Now the question we have to ask ourselves is this, are these stories all made up or like the flood narrative that spans cultures and time periods, is there some truth to them? There are many accounts of discoveries of fire-breathing sea serpents on the wild seas, much like the description of Leviathan that we find in Job chapter 40. Now, I'm no conspiracy theorist, despite what you might think, but I think we need to apply some sound reason to this. If these stories span cultures and time periods and they find support in real historical figures like St. George, and we have clear biblical backing of a real fire-breathing sea serpent-like creature who once existed and maybe still does, considering 95% of the ocean is still unexplored, who's to say that dragons are not a myth, but actually are real? Now, I'll leave you with a final thought for this episode, and with it, I will share my opinion, the answer to the question. Our enemy, the devil, is referred several times in scriptures as the serpent or the dragon, which mean functionally the same thing. Now we have, by God's grace, a true and better knight who slayed the dragon on our behalf and rescued us his bride when he died on the cross and rose again. So do dragons exist? I'll leave that question perhaps up to you, but I'd say that history, cross-cultural similarity, and most importantly, the biblical narrative seems to tell me that indeed they do. Thanks so much for joining me once again for A Moment in History.